In this session, we will build an IoT project from start to finish. The purpose of the project is to track room usage. How many times have you gone to book a conference room in the office only to find out that none were available according to the online scheduler? Yet when you walk around, you saw several that were unoccupied. The meeting didn't end up happening, but people forgot to cancel the room reservation. With this project, you'll be able to get the truth about room usage. Our IoT device will use a motion sensor to detect whether or not someone is actually in the room and then we'll send that information to the cloud. First, let's start with the device side of things. Here are the parts we'll need. A Raspberry Pi 2 with a case and power supply, at least an 8 gigabyte class 10 micro SD card, a supported Wi-Fi dongle, a passive infrared or PIR for short motion sensor, an LED, a 220 ohm resistor, some jumper wires, and a mini breadboard. Let's start by connecting the PIR motion sensor to the Raspberry Pi. Since the PIR's pins stick out the back of the sensor, I like to use a right angle header. It not only makes it easy to connect the PIR sensor to the breadboard, but it also allows me to just rest the sensor on top of the breadboard so that I don't have to figure out some other way to mount it. If you don't have a right angle header, then use female to female jumpers instead and just plug the jumpers directly into the sensor's pins. Then you can use either double sided foam tape or hot glue to mount the sensor to the breadboard. The sensor has just three pins, voltage and ground pins to power the sensor and a signal pin to indicate that motion has been sensed. The pins should be labeled right on the sensor. If not, check the data sheet to make sure which pin is which. Pin order varies by manufacturer, so double check before you wire anything up. For mine, this is the voltage in pin, this is the signal pin, and this is the ground pin. We'll connect each of these three pins to the Raspberry Pi using our jumper wires. First, connect the voltage and ground pins. Insert the male end of one jumper into the tie point in the same row into which the sensor's voltage in pin is connected. Do the same with the sensor's ground pin. Now connect the voltage jumper to any 5 volt pin on the Raspberry Pi 2. I'll use pin 2. And the ground jumper to a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. I'll use pin 6. If you aren't familiar with the pinout of the Raspberry Pi 2, do a Bing search and find a pinout diagram like this one. It shows all the pins and what they are for. I tend to keep one of these open while I'm building and always double check before making any connections. The last connection for the PIR sensor is the signal pin. It needs to be connected to one of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. So let's run a jumper from the breadboard, mail end into the tie point on the same row as the PIR sensor's signal pin, to the Raspberry Pi, female end into GPIO 5 which is pin 29. Now for the LED, first plug your 220 ohm resistor in, into any two unused rows in the breadboard. Direction is not important. Then use a jumper to connect 3.3 volts from the Raspberry Pi to one end of the resistor. Here I'm using pin 1 on the Raspberry Pi. Connect the long end of the LED to the other end of the resistor. Push the short leg of the LED into any unused row in the breadboard and connect a jumper into that same row. Now connect the other end of that jumper to a GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. I'm using GPIO 6, which is pin 31. Now we have our PIR sensor and LED connected to the Raspberry Pi. Voltage and ground connections for power and GPIO connections to communicate. That's it for the hardware side of our device. Now let's turn to the software side of things. First, we need to image our SD card with Windows 10 IoT Core. Go to windowsondevices.com and click Get Started Now. Here you'll get information about what you need to develop for Windows 10 IoT Core. You'll need a recent version of Windows 10 on your development machine, along with an updated version of Visual Studio 2015. Also, there are instructions for enabling developer mode on your Win 10 device. 
Next, click Get Windows 10 IoT Core Dashboard to download and install the dashboard. This app makes it really easy to work with your Windows 10 IoT Core devices. Once you've installed the app, launch it. Then click the Set up a new device button to flash the OS image to your SD card. Once you insert the SD card into your computer, select the drive from the drop down list, accept the terms and conditions, and click Download and Install. The whole process will take a few minutes, but once it's complete, eject your SD card and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. Before we power up the Pi, let's connect it to our network. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the Pi. You can either plug the other end of the Ethernet cable into your router or into your dev machine if you have internet connection sharing turned on. I use internet connection sharing, so I'll connect it to the PC. Now, power up the Pi. As the Raspberry Pi is powering up, click on the My Devices link in the IoT dashboard. This screen will list all the devices which are active on your network. If you see your device come online, then you know everything has been set up properly.